okay so we're going to spend the first hour in discussing about uh, uh, web applications uh, in python okay yeah i'm not saying about uh, creating a website for the project where you just have to learn some html and formatting uh, css and stuff like that uh, but in that case there will be there are there are static static pages okay where you design just them by hand we need to uh, on the other hand uh, learn how to program a website with a given logic behind it uh, in in and in, uh, in python we'll use it uh, we need this skill for two different reasons first of course if your project needs some web interface you know, to 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 interact with the user uh, we need of course to have a, a, an intelligent backend uh, uh, that uh, that is able to generate uh, the website but as we will see later uh, the web technologies uh, will also be used uh, for machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications so if you have two different devices and they need to exchange information actually the easiest way to do that uh, is to use uh, uh, web technologies so you are not going to publish a website uh, you are going to publish some data or some services uh, to other devices in your network that can communicate with each other so the basic uh, the basic technologies are the same the basic way of constructing uh, applications are the same the difference is that in one case you are generating html pages and in the other cases you are just exchanging data formatted usually in the json format and the second the second case is also the normal for interacting with other kind of iot devices or cloud services but one piece at a time so first of all uh, we need to learn how to create a simple web application hmm? in python we do that for web uh, we start for creating websites here for interactive interfaces and la later on we'll see how it 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 applies also to server side interfaces we want to learn a very simple programming framework and uh, uh, basically as as always uh, uh, there are plenty of libraries to choose from when you want to select a, a given framework or library for doing something and uh, uh, it may be surprising but uh, in the standard library python already has uh, a very simple web server called uh, the simple http server class uh, well which is really really too simple for us so it's better to find something uh, which is a mo bit more complete and there are different uh, as i mentioned different frameworks uh, from the simpler ones to the more supported or more complex ones so if you're going to do something really complex uh, probably a framework like uh, Django which is the most uh, probably uh, famous uh, uh, Python framework uh, can be used it's very powerful but it's also it has a lot of features and we don't need all of them in our project so we selected flask as the okay that is also this one this flask which is a, a really a framework where, where you can start simple you can really start with a very a few lines of code but it's not lines of code that matter but uh, uh, the concepts that you need to learn about the framework are very very few uh, instead of django for before writing a first application you really need uh, to understand how the whole framework works uh, in, in flex is much more incremental so we'll add features uh, as we go and it has a very extensible system of additional plugins mm -hmm. so we learn uh, among all of these uh, we learn how to uh, develop applications in flask of course uh, many concepts are common to uh, all of these frameworks so it will be easier for you if you need to move from one uh, to the other but these are just some examples of the many frameworks that can be used okay so uh, to start um, flask uh, is uh, of course published on this uh, web page uh, flask.poku.org where you can find all the information in particular there's this doc uh, docs uh, page uh, with a lot of extensive documentation from the simpler one to the more more complex one and uh, really uh, flask is a combination of three different tools when you download flask you are downloading actually three different packages one is flask I itself that uh, is able uh, to manage and create applications web applications Web application means uh, being able to host the logic that you write for your application. Uh, 
a web application must rely on a web server a web server is a much low uh, lower level component that will handle all the interaction on the http protocol so actually a web application is made of two layers one that manages the connection the http protocol and one that uh, say is able to uh, implement uh, or customize the logic uh, where uh, your application is responding to a given request the http level is standard doesn't need to understand anything about the website uh, the application level understand all the logics of your application what kind of response to give in which conditions but doesn't uh, directly handle the connection these two are very integrated uh, and uh, actually it's very difficult to separate them and uh, in this case in our case the flask uh, integrates inside uh, its configuration this this uh, I, I i can't read it his name i don't know how, how to pronounce that uh Wurzaug or something like that uh, uh, which is the http server component hmm? we shouldn't need uh, to know too much about this except uh, for starting the application or configuring some host and port parameters which is actually the business of the http server all the work for us will be at the higher level so co constructing the application and uh, <coughs> one of the activities of uh, uh, constructing an application is generating html pages and generating html pages by a program is very very boring it's a very boring task uh, because you need to generate all the tags and the closing tags and uh, the new line escaping the quotes and so uh, and so and so so there is a facility which is common to all web environments uh, to define a set of templates so how the html page should look like with uh, and in this template you can have some tags uh, that correspond to executable code so you you don't have to generate all the html and body and uh, and the p tags and everything from your python code you can give it an html template and have the template being processed by the application server uh, so that all the static text uh, just gets copied from the template uh, and all the programming tags uh, are replaced by by your logic uh, behavior if you have done some php in the past actually this is the concept okay except that php only has templates in this case we can we can use them if we need them and uh, so templating is just a string uh, processing system when you have a very uh, document with a set of tags uh, and some callbacks to fill those tags uh, when you're processing this document so so it may exist independently from the web it may be useful also in other contexts and so there's a separate library which is called the jinja2 i don't know whether this symbol means anything but it's the logo for this uh, uh, jinja2 uh, package that contains the templating engine so actually we are working in the set of these three different libraries and we'll see them because when we know when we need to know something more about it the text and the de templates we need to go to the to the jinja documentation that by the way is developed by the same group of developers you see that the, do the domain is the same so they are very tightly integrated but they are developed as separate products okay so that's the context and uh, uh, you ju we just need to install the flask package with pip and uh, uh, and start uh, working okay um, in uh, if we're using uh, uh, PyCharm it's much easier also because we just need to create when we create a new project we select uh, not a pure Python project but rather a flask project okay so in this case we can uh, you know demo website demo web hmm? project a demo project for our web technologies and uh, as always uh, uh, we you can choose whether to use the system interpreter or to create a virtual environment uh, and the second choice the virtual environment can be useful if you have different uh, projects that have that require different packages for example flask is only required for web applications but not for other projects so you don't want to maybe install packages 
into the uh, system web interpreter but the default is using a new virtual environment and uh, you see that uh, in the project creation dialog you have the choice of many or in this case two different uh, uh, templating engines okay that's it and we create the project uh, most of the time is spent just for setting up the virtual environment so copying all the python interpreter links and libraries and so on installing flask so it needs to if if it's not already there it will be uploaded um, downloaded so you said it also works like and um, are also installed so what is the structure of the project that has been created um the we have the main directory of the project here that was created with a simple app.py app stands for applications application uh, main file and uh, two folders called uh, static and templates uh, we'll see that the templates directory are for the name says html templates that we want to fill so our html code and the static directory is for static not dynamic content that we want to include for example images for example uh, uh, style sheets uh, javascript files and so on everything that, that 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 doesn't need to be processed by python can go into the static directory okay but and uh, outside these two folders static and templates we have uh, we are in a python project so it will be all python code mainly we have this uh, application.py this is very simple which is the basic the, this is the basic structure of a flask application so i i can increase the font okay so you need to import the flask class and you create a new object a new flask object with a given name Na name is the name of the of the of the module so in this case it will be app hmm? name gathers from the file name app so we have created a flask application a web application using flask and we just need to run this application to start the web server and start the website so once we, we run this application the web start will start uh, listening for request of connection from a browser then of course the website needs to know what to do when the browser requests uh, the home page for example or when the browser requests uh, another page another url inside that site that website and this is done by defining a set of functions a set of functions that will return the content of the different pages of the website and each of these functions is mapped via a routing mechanism to a given page address inside the application okay so actually what we are saying is that this application that we create routes the requests for the home page to this function called hello world this function will be called every time a browser requests the home page slash address from our website and what is the function what is the the goal of this function the contract of this function is that this function should return a string and the and this string should be the full content of the page that will be transferred to the browser and then the browser will show it to the user okay so we have a cycle where the user selects an address writes an address into their browser the browser makes the request to our server the server analyzes the request address and tries to match it to the different routes that have been defined 
when it finds a route it calls the function whose duty is to generate the, pa the page corresponding to that route okay so there is this simple routing mechanism so here wait uh, like that like this this is the address where the page is published if you want to move a page into the website you just have to change this address the address where the page is published is independent from the name of the function that generates it so in a way you have a logical name for your page that can be the name of the function and you have a physical location where the page is published uh, the routing mechanism, uh, you have an asterisk here, is mar more powerful than this because you can have a set of different addresses mapped to the same function that will, in a, uh, will contain parameters to be processed, but one step at a time. How to run, uh, how to run the application? There are two different ways. One is uh, in the main of the module, just call the run method for the application. You see that the, the template, the project template that PyCharm gave us already contains this information, these uh, instructions. The other way <coughs> is uh, calling a script, an external program called Flask, with the parameter run, uh, that will load the module, the, will, this, this will do an import of apt, and then calling uh, will actually run the application okay it's a more indirect way and uh, the developers of flask uh, suggest using the second way because it's it's better for uh, applications that need to be changed and reloaded and something like that um, so it's better always to understand which of the two ways uh, we are using uh, actually the latest versions of uh, pycharm uh, use the second option so if you go into the running configuration here you see that uh, what is that uh, oh we see that later we it will execute a script and we'll pass uh, if we if we want to pass some options uh, we'll see in a moment uh, why to the to the application we need to include these options here um, let me show you if i run this project okay by chance will tell me that okay it will set up some environment variables here and will run this command so it looks like uh, it's a bit confusing because you see the run method but the, this run method will never get called this main is never get called for the way in which this PyCharm project is uh, uh, set up. If you run the command on the command line, if I just do python app.py, of course it will run here. It will execute the main. But if you are just using PyCharm here, uh, the actual command that will be executed is the one. So it runs another Python interpreter by executing the command flask with the option run. Run what? Run this which is div, uh, defined in to an environment variable. It's a very strange way, but just to tell you that if you are writing some code here, it will never be run, okay? So it's a, it may be a problem, or just or, or at least a confusion. Hmm? So for example, if you want to set the debug mode for the, for the web server that, we, that will print out uh, all the exceptions that we get so that we can debug them, uh, in the documentation you can find that uh, you can put the parameter debug equal to true in the run method but it doesn't work because the run method is not called here what you actually have to do what we have to do is to change the configuration here for example saying okay i want to debug run to the debug mode okay and uh, again if i want to add some options like the the change the port uh, on which the web server is listening or change the address uh, to which the web server will bind their sockets we cannot use these options here 
uh, but rather we have to set some additional options to the script mm -hmm. so it's just a bit confusing because you have to match the doc documentation of flask uh, with uh, the way in which uh, pycharm creates the prod but it's if we if we do everything within pycharm it's uh, it's a uh, known problem so in fact if i run this again after i set the debug you see that the console would say that the debug variable has been set to one and uh, there is this debugger ping that maybe we'll see later what's used for okay but so this is very simple once we set it up because we, we have been running an application and it says that the the website is running on this address localhost 5000 so 5000 is the default port uh, that is used by flask if you don't change it that, that is what that is what will be used and if you just click on this link you will open a browser with a hello world so actually what happened you see it here in the log is that this web server got a request so the web server is started on port 5000 when i open the browser with this address home slash uh, localhost uh, um, colon 5000 i'm calling the home page so this is the request that was received by my flask application get slash get the home page get is the most uh, useful uh, the most basic http command right so here i see what the web server got and uh, internally flask analyzed this request slash and they found a route defined for this address so it called this function and this this is where my code is executed and this function returned a string this string is then returned to the browser and the browser showed it this is not even html if you see the source the source is just plain text it's not really a web page it's just a, a bit of text but the server doesn't care what you return the server just cares about uh, returning something some string then the browser will need to interpret this string and if it's in html render it render all the layout all the styles and so on hmm? rendering the, the, the content is the browser's job not the server's job and by the way we see that the browser al also requested uh, this other address automatically fev icon which is the small icon that is shown here beside the, uh, the address okay uh, you see that for example in github you have this small icon of github here in the in the tab bar uh, here we don't see anything because the browser automatically when you visit a site requests to the website please tell me your icon well small icon to show and uh, in this case we didn't define anything in this uh, path we didn't set a route for this and so the server responded with an error code not found so this is the the, the http status code we'll spend some time on the http details later on when we when we really need that but 200 means okay the request has been satisfied 404 means not found this document is not, has not been found is not a big error by by itself the browser just ignores the fav icon because it's not there so what we can do is to improve this method and let it return some real html so maybe we want to show a, a page with some description of our project uh, with the possibility of for logging into the pro on the, onto, onto the system or searching uh, you know the, the the services of the system and so on so we need here to write some html can be done we just open we just change the string maybe we do a multi-line string here and inside the multi-line string uh, we write html 
so HTML slash HTML then we have the head the body Uh, inside the head we have the title usually inside the body we, uh, we may have a title a heading h1 and the text So we are writing by hand our HTML of the page with uh, no assistance from PyCharm because PyCharm has no idea of what we are writing. We are just inside the string. So every HTML error or mistake that we make will not be marked uh, with the syntax uh, highlighting or syntax correction in, in any way. Okay, but if we do that, we restart the application and uh, if we reload the page right now the page didn't change of course because the browser just shows me the page that we already fetched before if we want to see the changes we need to refresh the browser and in that case you see that of course the the page has been changed has been there's a title there's uh, there there's a heading here there's some text here and the source actually shows our HTML. Mm. By the way, uh, there's a blank line here that I wouldn't like to have. Mm. View page source, control U, usually. Mm. Uh, and so we have that. We can create our website in the HTML, but you see how, how ugly the the code is going to be because we are mixing some logic here with a lot of uh, boilerplate text uh, and text and so on it would be much better if we could uh, put all the html into a separate file and just use that file here okay so we can do that of course with the templating mechanism Uh, what we can do is to create templates here a new file into the templates directory we call it for example new uh, template new why is that yeah there should be a new HTML file. Or there is not template line here. No, there was no. Okay. Let's just use HTML. Okay, we call it uh, home. Okay, so a template is just a normal HTML file. We can populate the content of that file from our example. So the title is this one. The body is here. And of course, here, um, the PyCharm he understands what we are doing and is able to you know, help me write in the text, uh, mark the errors, and uh, and so on. So I created separately a separate file that should be the response of this uh, uh, home page. How can I use this in our in my in my application? So the idea is that. I 
I, we, I I'm just skipping the slides because I want to follow the example but all the all the topics will, will, will be covered of course uh, yeah so a template is just an HTML file as we created that can contain special tags for the moment we don't have any of them we'll add, uh, we'll add them later and uh, the way of executing a template uh, is just calling the render template function so instead of returning a string we call render template that will read the string and uh, return the processed string so in our case sorry in our case in the application we just throw away everything and we just return the render template and of course we need to import it from flask with the home.html file you see the once you are once you are inside the the course uh, um PyCharm knows uh, to look for the file names in the templates directory so if you do auto completion it will get you the file so the result here is the same if you go to the website the content is actually the same it's a bit better looking due to the better formatting of the html template but in your your code is cleaner because you say we have the logic here this route is mapped to this function and this function renders this template and the template with all the details about the html and the, the the graphical issues and so on is in a separate file okay so what can we do if we want to create more than one page we should create links between these pages course and uh, so for example we have an about page say some exp something about our project so we want for example to improve the home page and saying okay after the hello world we can add another paragraph saying uh, you want to learn uh, learn everything about us And about us should be a link. Okay. Should be a link to another page. That we create. Of course, we, we must create this page. So we must create a new HTML file called about. And of course, uh, the title will be about us, and the body will be a heading and a paragraph. We are the best, and then back to home page. So we have two files about.html and home.html that links to each other so in about we have a link to return to home and in home we have a link to return to go to about and of course we need uh, to define a route because these are just files saved into the template directory to publish them on our website we need to create a route mapping an externally visible address to that specific page so for example we define a route for the slash about dot 
address defining an about function that returns render template template of sorry about.html so this may look uh, duplicating information because we are about.html which is this is the name of the externally visible address of the page this about here in the in line four in, in line 12 is the internal name of the file we use to create the page and the def the, the definition of the function is actually the logical name of that functionality we run it again and we should see that the home page now has a link learn everything about us if we click here it will require the about of HTML page, of course, because the browser just requested that. This about has been received by the web server, and uh, it has activated this function about that generated the about of HTML um, page. The, uh, it executed this template. Now, if you go back to home, probably we'll get an error. Uh, we, because uh, uh, it's a my mistake of course it's always my mistake uh, because in the about uh, I wrote home.html but home.html is not mapped anywhere so we must keep track we call the file home.html but I should keep track that the external name of this page is root slash is not home it may get confusing so actually what we want to do is to avoid remembering all these external mappings for me the important page is the home page for me the important page is the about page and so on so we'll try to use uh, let's call it not hello world but home and about try to use uh, in the templates the logical names how to do that well it's easy because inside the HTML templates we can interpolate Python expressions there's a syntax where we can have these double braces that incorporate Python variables or expressions or or parameters that we pass to the to the template And there was also a language uh, made with this uh, percent brace with the if uh, loop uh, for and so on uh, inside template so we can execute or skip a block of temp of pages just using this uh, templating uh, uh, very simple language but let's start with this there is one function that we can use which is called URL4 URL4 just gets uh, as a parameter sorry gets as a parameter the logical name of a function and returns the externally visible URL So in this case we can ask uh, to the templates okay we don't know how this page is published but Python knows so in, inside the link address href we call the URL for function and what do we want we want the home page this home is the logical name of the function is is this one and the same we can do in the home page instead of our coding the address of the page because maybe you want to move it around 
we just ask uh, for the URL for the about page. So we have some Python code executing inside the page that will get replaced by the output of this function, of this function call. So right now we don't have to care about the addresses. If we rerun the application, everything should work, probably. You see that the links are about the HTML here below. And uh, this one is just uh, the link to the home page without home.html because it's mapped to this URL. If uh, we don't like this uh, about.html address, for example, we can change it. At this point, everything is dynamically computed. So I don't like about.html because just let's call it about us without the HTML extension. No problem. It still works. Okay, because if I run it again, it will work, and of course the URL is now different about us. So it's just you know, external attributes that we can change to reorganize the website, uh, as long as the important thing is uh, the logical name of the function. And every all the navigation inside the website will be done uh, here by defining this logical function. So right now, the, uh, this website doesn't add very much, really, because it just, uh, you know, has a set of static pages that can be um, shown to the user. The templating mechanism also allows us to do some uh, parametric modification of the pages. So for example, a very simple uh, example is uh, we want to uh, maybe we have a, a variable that calls uh, that tells us the project name, which is a project, and we want to include this project name into a specific part of the page. Of course, right now it's a constant, so it's just a, a futile exercise. But uh, imagine that it's coming from some database query or whatever. We'll see in a moment how it comes from the user data. So we can incorporate some values from the Python context into the template with a sort of uh, additional parameters. So when I call the render template, after the name of the template, I can add more parameters. For example, project equal to project name. No, 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 what's that? So of course, project name is a local variable that is just set, uh, and project is a new parameter that I'm creating for this template. So inside the template, now I can use the project variable as a string. If I go to the home template, demo website for the project you see that in the completion we all we now have uh, the name of the parameters that have been passed to this uh, page and if we run it again we see that now the home page should include uh, this string that has been dynamically included so this is the mechanism for passing easy variable strings basically from the containing Python code to the template and when we run the render template it will replace all those uh, fragments into double braces to their Python equivalent okay so um, what's the next step Right now we can integrate variables, we can jump between pages. We'd like to have the user also some enter some information maybe. So we want the user to from the home page uh, to be able to log in into the system. 
Okay. So we can add login means uh, first uh, setting inserting an, a form into the web page and then processing the data from that form. Okay, inserting a form is easy, it's just HTML. So we go to the HTML of the home page and saying uh, and we create a, a very small login form. Form action. Well, and then we decide which action goes to the form and inside the form we just have a very simple input text let's assume we have no password for the moment uh, name equal to login That's it. Should be enough. Okay, we have something like that. Okay, we also need some mid button probably. This was the easy part, creating the HTML for the form. Then the user will insert a name here. So my name will be used as login. And click on go. What happens now? What? Nothing right now. Because we didn't uh, set an action for the form. And the action is what happens when the submit button is clicked. Uh, for processing the form content we need uh, to have uh, um, a page <coughs> that will be able to process this data so we define a new route called maybe login and we define function login where we must validate in some way the data and check it's correct and so on and then do some action afterwards generate a page a response page um, so right now we know that forms in HTML can be submitted in with two different uh, commands at the HTTP protocol level. A, a form can may be submitted uh, with the method uh, the method can be get or post. Usually, forms are submitted with a post method because in this way we don't see all the parameters on the on the URL line of the, of the web page. Okay, so this is the, is the default. Maybe it's better to be explicit. And the action should be a, the web page that is able to collect the data and validate them and compute something with them. For us, it will be the login page. So again, we use the URL for login. So right now we have a form that when we click on the submit button, it will send a post command to the login page, whose address is specified in the route. Hmm? That login page here should process this data, should be able to extract that data from the form and do something with that and there is a forms in 
not sure I remember sorry I mean let me let, let me check yeah the way we extract information from a request from a dynamic page from a form from information coming from the user is this request object that's available in Flask request encodes everything we know about the, the request coming from the browser so the browser, <coughs> the address, uh, the version and so on in particular it encodes, it has a form property that's actually a dictionary <coughs> mapping all the names of the input values of the input fields of the, fi of the form to the value that the user actually typed in so what happened is that I wrote this text input and I gave a name to this text input login this is just a logical name for this text box this name populates a dictionary with login with this name as the key and the text typed by the by the user Fulvio as the value I can recover this from here so the login name for the user is request dot forms form singular I always I always forget of course we need to import request object for the first time flash dot request yeah and uh, the logical name here so this name is the key to the dictionary that must be the same as the name of the interactive element so we retrieve this information so the information travels from the browser to flask to the server and we extract the information here from this login name okay and then we can now say the user are welcome because that now they are logged into the system so instead of uh, you know we have a very generic well we can create a new page welcome page and we can say that welcome user So after the login is successful, we can welcome the user. So we can return. Of course, here if we should check uh, the login validity. Right now we have no password, or anything else. We don't. We should at this point run a query to the database for checking. Okay, is this username and password pair valid? If yes, then welcome the user if no then write then go to an error, generate an error page okay in this case we had, we, uh, we assume that everything is valid sorry uh, check login validity what did they do here okay and uh, oh. sorry i had a class in java the, the hour before this <laughs> and uh, so in um okay we can re render temp return render template of welcome with the username equal to login name so we use now right now the parameter mechanism for the templates uh, to insert some real dynamical data we didn't we we can know what the name is uh, beforehand so let's check it okay we go to the browser we reload the home page we are, this still works of course and then i log in with my name and uh, 
it doesn't work. Uh, but the, the error is different. It doesn't say the page doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist, the address doesn't exist. Huh? The method is not allowed for the requested URL. What does it mean? That uh, up to now, we, already, we always generated get requests here. Get, get about us, get the home page, and so on. When we submitted the form, we, used it, we are using the POST command of the HTTP protocol. So we need to tell that this login page should be require, requested with the POST method and not with the GET method. Okay, by default, uh, all the routes we define are routing the GET request. If we want, we can change them and we say, okay, but this page needs to be called with a POST because it will contain all the data of a form. POST is only used if you have data to POST, not data to push to the web server. So there is a method, a methods parameter that accepts an array of all the methods that are allowed for this specific call. So in this case, we only need the POST method. We could say, well, either POST or GET is OK. We could, in some cases, list more than one method. Of course, then internally, we should understand what is happening. But in this case, it's easier just saying, OK, this, this function only works for the POST method. If we want, we can create another function that registers the same address, the same route, with the GET method. So it's the combination of the route name and uh, the method that make uh, this, that should be unique, it should be not ambiguous. So right now, we just saw, uh, we, we say that this method is expected to be called uh, with a POST method. And so if I go, then it works. Okay. So what have we learned about user interaction? If we are creating forms, we should always label form elements with a logical name. This name, sorry, here. Yeah. This name will become the key to a dictionary requested form where we can extract all the information. And when we submit a form, usually we use the POST method. We will spend many more words about GET versus POST versus, versus other, other HTTP methods when we understand how these methods are used for machine-to-machine -machine communication. Right now, in browsers, basically, GET is used 99% uh, of the time, every, every time you click on a link, uh, and POST is used uh, if and only if you are submitting a form. So it's easy <laughs> right now. So it's very, uh, we, we don't need to go <coughs> to understand it deeper today. Mm. We will in a very short time. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the, the, ba the basic mechanism. So of course, uh, much of the work uh, will be about uh, creating the HTML pages. So for every new page, uh, we need to create the HTML, include the, var the variables and so on. Mm. It will be the long part of the work. It's always better to start with a blueprint of what you want to do so you scratch on a piece of paper the pages what they contain and then understand what navigation you need and then later on you can create the pages and create um, the, the route the, the logical functions here uh, this uh, just to help you these symbols here h are links to the html so if i want to see the html of this page i just have to click here and will bring me to the template if i click on the template it will bring me back to the python code so it's easy to not getting lost uh, uh, in the in the in the many functions that we are defining okay this is the basics what are the, the additional information that we can have <coughs> so let me go back and say what i skipped well first of all we have in mind we have this picture right now we have the browser that is the will just render the HTML, 
and allow the user maybe to log into the form. We have all the HTTP protocol that connects the browser to the server, and the server is part HTTP server that handles the low-level protocol and part flash, which is the app dot route, the app object that we are we've been working on. Right now, we, we, all the routes have been defined inside the flash. Flash is also used uh, in the render template code. Here we have the Jinja that uh, um, combines Python and HTML into one single file that will be sent to the browser. And we, we didn't see it yet today, but we already could imagine that this Python code, uh, in many cases, in most of the cases actually, cannot reply unless it can check or read some data from the database. So everything we are being learning with interactive tools for the database uh, is actually the, the backend portion of the web applications. So inside a, 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 a Flask method, you can open your connection to database using the method that we experienced in the, in the last labs, for example. Hmm? Okay, so it's not more complex than that. There is also a mechanism, okay, don't... Uh, for including images, for example, or other content. Okay, because render template right now is only able to render HTML templates. Uh, but what happens if we want to include a logo or an image or a style sheet or a file that doesn't need to be processed by Python, doesn't need to be processed by Flask, just need to be served. So I want to bypass all the processing, just uh, give a file back to the, um, to the user. This can be done with a special syntax URL for usually here you have the name of the function, <coughs> the logical name we called it. If for the logical name you use the word static, then it will look into the static folder instead of templates. And then you just have to specify which file name you choose uh, in the static folder. Okay, so if we want to include an image, I don't know, let's guess any, no, no, no sorry. Oh, it's a project, so let's for an image about project. This one. Okay. We want to use this image you know, on, our, on our website. So let me save it. Uh, so where's the project should be yeah by charm demo web static project or jpeg okay just the first picture i found i want to include that and in into my home page it's easy because i now just have to work in the home template and uh, we can include uh, an image source so usually for the source you have uh, an, an url for uh, for an image we can use the again url for <coughs> static and then the name of the image, oh no, the file, <coughs> file name. It's a bit verbose, I hate it. <coughs> file name is the name of a file uh, in the static template. And then in our case, it will be project.jpg. So every, every time you have to include a, a static content, you have to go this long way. So double braces, your for static, file name equal, and finally the content that you want. Okay? So in that case, it will generate the actual URL at which that resource is being published. So if everything is working,
if we reload the home page well, okay it's a bit large okay we have this image included uh, and we see that this image is now published at this address static slash project of jpeg okay so everything in under state under the static folder here in the project will be published in the static uh, uh, a virtual folder on the, as a url but we don't need to know we don't need to know that because we are using your for url for to do all the computation for us to determine the actual address here okay so your for is used uh, in two different ways one for dynamically generating the address of a page given the logical name second is for generating the, the address of a static resource static resources are images javascript files css files style sheets basically all of, of this or maybe a pdf to be downloaded or other resource like that a zip file something to be downloaded not to be processed by the by the server another interesting feature we cannot appreciate it today is that uh, routes uh, are much more powerful than just strings so you can define a, a parametric route that is able to capture in a single line a set of related uh, addresses url addresses so imagine that we have uh, several pages for user profiles so every page uh, should give information about a specific person so instead of creating many many different pages and we don't know how many at the beginning maybe because this number is dynamic users can be can, can increase at any time we don't want to create new pages new dev functions anytime so we create a wildcard <coughs> route every route that starts with slash user slash something is mapped to this function and this something is a parameter marked by uh, angular brackets and this parameter username becomes a parameter of the function <coughs> so if the user writes or in some way it links to a page slash user slash fulvio then the, the function show user profile with the string fulvio will be called and so inside the string uh, we can do whatever we want for example use that for creating database use, use that for showing to a template and so on so in this way we can you know, compact uh, groups of similar pages that share a similar address into one single call with a parameter function more than that uh, this parameter can be typed we can express a type for example post slash 27 and we know that this parameter should be a number not a name not a string so we specify with int and so only numbers will be accepted so if i write post uh, abc we get i get an error if i write post 27 then <coughs> the show post function is called and we have all these uh, types of uh, <coughs> of parameters so it's a good practice with this uh, syntax which is very simple uh, to 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 catch uh, all the all the possible parameters um, the reverse is also true you know that url4 is, uh, is used for generating the addresses when it generates an address it can also add some parameters yeah. so it will generate a url with the parameter appended in the same form in which the route syntax is able to accept that, that, uh, that name so this is also a way of passing information from one page to another of course it this is a basic mechanism it depends on how we want to use it in our application and if we want if we need it in our application um, okay so let <coughs> and another detail that i skipped in the first pass uh, and will show you now is uh, the another powerful 
uh, syntax in the template so if you want to um, generate different pages depending on some condition uh, you can use the of course different templates or just one template with some conditional statements inside or some uh, loops inside so for example you want to uh, write a list of all the names uh, of the registered users I can pass a list from the Python code to the template and the template can iterate and repeat a block of HTML many, many, many times or you can, you can skip for example the welcome page could check whether the login was successful or not and do s and write different messages no? just for example here we had the login page okay we had we pass one the username and we, we may pass a success parameter but in this case it's true and we, we may want to personalize the the, the text uh, if the success is true then we write welcome otherwise uh, we write login error for user for this user so we write different messages depending on a parameter and we can do that with a simple if statement uh, at the level of the template so we need a different syntax if uh, and now we have the parameter success uh, then write this otherwise write this and then we need to close uh, the, the if statement so if as and if so again we are using a parameter to the template success variable and in this case it's used to uh, process one part or another or a different part of the template so the double braces are for python code the brace percent sign are for higher level statements uh, in this uh, uh, it's a it's a, a small language for if uh, um, other types of statements uh, on this page you have all the instructions you can create a big type of logic inside the pages just to <coughs> offload from the python all the details of creating the html let's try to keep the logic in the python code and the layout in the within the template okay um let's try it now right now it should be the same because success is true here and so if i log in here otherwise uh, the home page it says welcome if okay the login validity determined that the success is false then if i rerun the application i will get a login error okay so we have the basic for for creating the, this page of course we need a, a bit more structure there are powerful mechanisms for um, let's say inheritance between templates because you probably have a, a website with the pages that look more or like the same with they have the same header the same footer or the same menus and so there's a uh, inheritance among templates you can look up it very easy in the, um, the documentation but we'll uh, we'll use it when we see how to integrate as bootstrap styles css styles into flask at that point we'll see how to um, separate temp a template for the let's say the frame around the page from the template uh, concerning the specific uh, content of the page itself so we can put in one template everything around the page and in another template what's specific from page to page so we need uh, um, so some more steps to go these are just the basics for creating an application and uh, what you can do now is uh, uh, already start uh, probably integrating some database calls in that, in that one important concept that we are still missing are sessions this is a longer a longer topic 
how to remember values uh, in uh, applications okay right now i only say one one word here about that i enter my name here right my name is in this login name variable i can use it in this page i can incorporate that into the web page use it for for customizing the web page and so on but as soon as this function is closed at the return statement this name is forgotten the server does not remember this name anymore so i i will not be able to go to the home page and see on the home page my name as we are custom in the top right corner of the page when we enter when we log into a website the website will remember us in all the in all the next pages but http is not built for that it's built for serving pages independent from one another one each other so we need a mechanism to be able to store some information in one page and be able to reuse this information on, in a different page and uh, global variables are not the, res the, the response <coughs> okay <coughs> because if i save here saved name saved login name for example one thing you can you could you could imagine say okay if i'm forgetting it let me save it and then i use it later because i saved it in a variable which is defined at the application level not inside the function what the problem with this is that this name will be shared between all the users of, of the website so we have the option of having a variable whose life is just one page or a variable that is shared for all the users of the website because the application is only one right now i'm the only one connecting on my computer but if i publish the application there will be 30 users connecting and this variable is only one so we need to study something in the middle that will be able to store some information to remember some information on a user per user basis these are sessions like we call session and they are used they are implemented using cookies okay but for today i think we already had enough uh, uh, from zero and uh, we need to walk uh, to the ladispe for uh, talking a bit about uh, the first feedback uh, of your project okay so see you there in 10 minutes